Nice to have you on. This is great. And to have an audience, I'm not used to that. Oh, that's Where right. <laughs> this is this is your first time on a late night show. It is. Oh, welcome. You're going to love it. Oh, yeah. You should get an audience for Face the Nation. I, I think that's a little edgy for politics. It really? can get a little violent, don't you think? In this the, the crowd might whip up your, your <laughs> guests, and David Ignatius might try to carve out somebody's eye with a broken <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Well, uh, you are the you are the the newest face of Face the Nation. You you are the nation face now. The, the scepter has face. been handed down. One of a storied line uh, of hosts. Um, what does the show mean to you? What what does it mean to you to become the host? It's it's so exciting for me, but it's also I feel a huge responsibility because of what you just said. You know, this is a 63 year institution. Um, Bob Schieffer before. John Dickerson mm -hmm. had me on so many times um, as a panelist, and I always loved it because you could have a conversation and actually sort of download everything you knew about the topic and had learned but weren't able to get into a broadcast on a daily basis. And I think now that I'm in the moderator's position, it's just such a gift to be able to dig into so many of these issues that because the news cycles in hyperdrive, we often just whip through. And there are so many news stories happening all at once these days because the president has us on this hyperdrive that being in the chair now I feel that responsibility to try to have some context and have a civil conversation but if it's if the because the news cycle is on such hyperdrive because of the the Twitter thumbs and you know the White House <laughs> for the most part that's that's one of the reasons why it's so fast how do you plan a show that goes on the air on Sunday morning because uh, whatever you've got in mind, say Friday afternoon, when you start laying down what the show will be and who the guests will be, could be completely meaningless. Exactly. Well, not meaningless, but old news 48 hours later. Exactly. I mean, sometimes you get to Sunday and you're like, what, what month was that, that that happened? And you're like, oh my God, that was just Wednesday. Uh, because you, there are so many stories. So we're constantly adjusting to a certain extent. You can kind of game it out. You know there are some big... Uh, deadlines on the calendar. We know the Iran nuclear deal decision is May 12th, so you can kind of plan for that, but it could come earlier. We don't know if the president makes that announcement. Things like that you can kind of game out, but it's really trying to stay as smart as you can on as many subjects as you can mm -hmm. uh, and deciding if we can talk to the best people. But we have a great team that's constantly, constantly reshuffling the deck. How do you get people who come on the show because not everybody is willing to come on the show, mm -hmm. or any of these shows, not just your show, is that there's a, there's a small coterie of people in Washington, D.C. who are willing to put their opinions on the line and, and, and across all the news. How do you get them to say something different on a Sunday morning? When, when, you, when you hear them repeating the party line, do you right. just want to grab them by the, the necktie and just rattle them till a new idea comes out? Grab them by the talking point and <laughs> exactly. say, no, go beyond it. Yes, I think the, the goal is always to go beyond the talking point. I think for us, we're not booking or looking for the opinion so much as who can provide the best context and information or who are the policymakers themselves. So we had the new national security advisor to the president, John Bolton, on the show on mm -hmm. Sunday mm -hmm. because there's absolutely a number of different issues on his desk all at once just three weeks into the job to tell us what do you plan to do with North Korea and Iran and Syria. So it wasn't someone's opinion so much as trying to get him to explain, okay, you have so much incoming right now, how are you planning for it? Mm -hmm. But you're exactly right. The safe thing is to stick to the talking point and to get him to go beyond that. I find you really have to read in as much as you can, be as specific as you can to try to nudge beyond it. So you're cramming for a final every, every Friday that's and That's exactly, Saturday. that's exactly what it's like. You don't have a weekend social life anymore. I don't have any life anymore, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> 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 this is my day off. Exactly. You, you entered a monastic uh, calling by being a host of one of these shows. It is, but it, it's exciting at the same time. Well, I, I watched your interview uh, with Bolton, and I want to I want to talk to you about the Iran deal. As you said, it's coming up. May twelfth is the deadline to signing on to an extension of the Iran deal. Uh, do I have that correct? May twelfth. Well, May twelfth is the deadline, and that's a decision for the president on whether he wants to put sanctions back on Iran oh, or I see. take them off. Okay, so. If he puts them back on, it would, in effect, arguably take us out of the deal. Okay. So you covered uh, the development or the creation of the Iran deal for two years. Mm -hmm. um, wh what do you think they're going to do? Do you, do you think they're going to get out of it? Do you think the president's going to drop it? 
There are so many diplomats just furiously working behind the scenes trying to find a third way, craft another way, because uh, as France's president recently said to a small group of journalists, including myself, he said, you know, people often say your president's very unpredictable, but I think he's very predictable if you just look at what he said on the campaign trail. And what did the president say on the campaign trail? Worst deal ever, I'm out. And that that's his brand, and he's going to stick to it. And so what you have right now are people trying to find a way to say, okay, how do we check the box where the president can say, I got us out of this deal, but then how can we actually not get out of it or keep the parts that are working? And can we find a way to do what all the national security officials are advising the president, which is keep this one program frozen, keep the nuclear program frozen, and push back on all the other parts. I, before we go, I, I understand that uh, you break news all the time. <laughs> and there's some news that I would just love if you could break for us tonight. Yes, I, I do have some breaking personal news. Um, my husband and I are going to be welcoming a baby in September, a baby boy. So, do you have any advice? <laughs> we, have, we have a little late show onesie for you. And my only advice, my only advice is get some sleep now. <laughs> Face the I Nation airs Sundays on CBS. <laughs> Margaret Brennan, everybody. We'll be right back with comedian Robert Smigel.